Hello there, I'm Nick Yakubuchi. This is RealScreenReviews.com, and our next movie review is the dramatic action crime thriller, The Town. The Town opened round the country on Friday, September 17, 2010, and it stars Ben Affleck, Jeremy Renner, John Hamm, Rebecca Hall, and Pete Postlewaite. This film comes to us from writer-director star Ben Affleck, director of the very serious drama Gone Baby Gone from just two years ago. Though a credible film on its own, that was kind of a downer of a story, and this time around he replaces the downtrodden overtones with a top-notch thriller in the style of Point Break or Heat. Our story opens, and the town that is in question is Charlestown, a blue-collar neighborhood in Boston that is actually known for being the place where more banks are robbed than anywhere else in America. Fathers that have made a rather lucrative living in this trade have trained and passed along their talents to their children that also have dreams of not working a hard life, but an easy one of crime. One of the mastermind planners of these bank heists is Doug McRae, portrayed by Ben Affleck, and in one fantastic opening action sequence, Doug and his masked pals raid a bank and make off with many tens of thousands of dollars in cash. They take along with them a hostage bank manager, Claire Kesey, and in order to escape the clutches of the law, they later release her unharmed. However, she now can identify certain voices and tattoos and markings on their body. To measure how much Claire actually knows, Doug accidentally bumps into her at the laundromat, and the two really seem to hit it off. As the relationship grows stronger, the lies become larger, and the danger that she, she presents as a witness to the federal agents is just as risky as her own situation when it comes to Jeremy Remmer's James Coughlin. James has been a lifelong friend with Doug and is always there to remind him that he did a nine-year stretch for a crime that they both committed. James also reminds me so much of Edward Norton's worm from the film Rounders because you know that this person is destined for nothing but very bad things and will most likely bring down anyone else that is around him when that happens. You also have our local Boston thugs under the thumbscrew of Pete Postlewaite's city mobster Fergus Fergie Combe, also known as The Florist. Add to that an obsessed FBI special agent Adam Frawley tightening his grip on one of the sisters of one of the heist members, and you have a very well-rounded story filled with three-dimensional characters that deliver one solid movie experience. Well, people, Ben Affleck has matur matured into a very credible leading man after years of what I deemed being Hollywood sellout boy with schlock like Paycheck, The Sum of All Fears, and Reindeer Games. He has come back with a very credible turn in the movie State of Play, as well as his performance in the town, he has also become a rather accomplished filmmaker in the last few years. Affleck makes very good use of the camera for almost the entire feature and brings quite a gritty and almost crime feel to every frame. In the style of The Departed and The Usual Suspects, this is just a thrilling story of corruption and the consequences that go right along with the choice of this lifestyle. The town is filled with many action shootouts and car chases that are so in your face that you'll feel like you're actually part of it. Those scenes, however, would be meaningless without the solid talent in front of the camera, starting with Rebecca Hall as Claire in one hell of a female performance, a characterization I believe to be one of the best supporting female performances of the year. And then there's the great Pete Postlewaite, who absolutely has to be the most intimidating, menacing and scary, five foot two inch man ever to walk the planet. Now, I have never watched TV's hit show Mad Men, and as much as it pains me to say this, I, I truly think that John Hamm was the one weak link in a top-notch ensemble cast that made this film a definite step above most others. The biggest compliment that I can pay this film is to say that it is a smart movie, and it tries to be as smart a movie as it can the entire two hours. I did think that the very end was very Hollywoodish, and it was also very convenient, but I really enjoyed almost every moment of this film. Maybe it took a few years off for Ben Affleck to come back to Hollywood with his game face on and really show us what he is capable of accomplishing both in front of and behind the camera. He started his career on a high note, and in my opinion slowly declined to the point where his movies were getting to be almost laughable. I'm so glad that he has fully redeemed himself with the town, and I encourage anyone interested in seeing a true thriller to make it a point to catch this at the multiplex. I think that it's amusing that Ben made all of these less than stellar action movies and then when he jumps behind the camera he delivers some of his best work. At just over two hours it felt like anything but and was a completely solid film from start to finish. Three and one half stars out of four and remember people, I'm not always right, only when it comes to the movies. And thank you for your attention.